It is absolutely amazing how much paper a real estate transaction creates. Today we're going to look at a way to reduce our paperwork while being not only as effective but even more efficient in the transaction process. Hi, I'm Byron Underwood and we're going to today look at going paperless as a buyer's agent. Now you could also use this when you're listing but I had to pick one or the other, so I chose today to, to work on uh, the buyer side. There are a few apps that we're going to take a look at here in a few minutes that will help us in becoming paperless. We're also going to take a, a few minutes in preparing as if we were going out to tour properties with the buyer and even before that work on the, the buyer counseling interview. When we're done, we're going to create the property tour, but we're not going to make any paper for us. Of course, I know that when I work with buyers, there's all kinds of different buyers, just like there are sellers. And if I'm working with a specific seller who needs paperwork in front of them versus electronic version, of course, I'm going to provide everything to them in a paper a format, just like if I'm working with a buyer that way. So the no paperwork side is for me and depending on how they want to operate. If they're uh, someone who's more comfortable with, with papers in front, of, in front of them, then I'm going to create my regular presentation for them in a paper format. That way they have that to be able to make their notes on. Otherwise, maybe I'll introduce them to uh, Evernote or um, something like that so that they can take their notes electronically as well. But for me, no paperwork. When the buyer has found the property that they they want to buy, we can actually make the offer in a paperless transaction format as well. And so we'll look at the contract and addenda and how to use the ZipForm program on our tablets. Uh, and then finally, we'll look at a couple of different management systems uh, that help organize and manage the transaction all the way through closing. So if we did those things in just a short period of time, introducing you to these different programs, then you should be able to begin to implement a more paperless transaction and become not even as efficient as an agent paperlessly, but even more effective as an agent. Let's get started. This is what my screen looks like on my tablet. I use an iPad tablet, uh, but uh, a Windows-based tablet and an Android tablet has a, many of the same uh, applications or apps that are available to the iPad. If you're using a tablet like an Asus or even one of the, the uh, Windows Surface tablets, then instead of the app presentations, you'll be going right online to use many of these programs. Let's start off with the, the central focus of the, the paperless agent, and that's the Evernote program. So when I'm in Evernote, um, I have a, a, a three different um, screens that I'm looking at. Um, think of Evernote as um, Microsoft Word. This is my document. So I can do anything in a Word document or an Evernote that I can do in a Word document. If I want to type, I can do that. I can add pictures to it, uh, tables. I can even put hyperlinks to the internet in there as well. So this is my document itself. That document lives in a folder just like any other Word document does. And I can have many documents within that one folder. So I can have a folder for a buyer or a folder for a seller. I even have folders for myself in my uh, uh, Evernote program. Uh, my vacations are in here. I have stuff about classes that I've taught uh, and conferences that I've gone to. And those all live over on, on the left-hand side of my Evernote uh, program. So. Now, let's use the Evernote words. Instead of a document, they call this a note. Instead of a, a folder, they call that a notebook. And so my notebooks live over on the left-hand side of, of Evernote. And so whether I'm working inside my uh, iPad or even my phone uh, or my computer, this is a screenshot off of my computer, I can access all my Evernote uh, documents and all my Evernote um, notebooks um, from any of the devices and it, it really facilitates my mobility. Uh, so when I'm moving, say for example, I've been to a closing 
and I'm on my way back to the office or back to my home base and the phone rings and it's a buyer. The buyer says, hey, I'd like to take a look at that property that you told me about yesterday afternoon. Can we pop by sometime this afternoon? Well, in the old days, if I didn't have that buyer file with me, it sent me scrambling and I had to either stop someplace where I could connect to the internet or get back to my office as quickly as possible so I could get a, a printed out copy of it. And I don't have to do that any longer. And let me show you how that works. Uh, and uh, Pop through a couple of these and I'll back up. Uh, my Evernote file gives me the opportunity to store MLS printouts. It's really kind of cool. Uh, I can save them as a PDF if my MLS system allows me to save that way. Or what I found, it was just a little bit easier for me to, uh, once I was in the MLS and looking at that, that certain property, you know, to right click and, and select all. Uh, some people use Control A to do that. Uh, well, once you select all of the information, you can then copy and paste right into an Evernote note. The neat thing about bringing it over as a copy and paste, many of the links uh, are hot. So if I wanted to click on the address, for example, it would move me over into a map because our MLS system allows that to happen. This one I brought over as a PDF, and let me show you how. Um, our MLS system, uh, we have two of them in Houston, one's Fusion and the other one's a Tempo product. The Fusion system allows me to print to a PDF document. And when I do that, I can go in and create a new note in my Evernote um, um, notebook. And uh, once I'm in there, I can just right click and, and uh, uh, insert that PDF. Or uh, if I've saved it as a, or if I've copied it, I can go right in there and paste it in and bring it on over. So no matter where I am, because I put this into the Evernote program in my computer, it syncs to my phone and it syncs to my iPad. So no matter where I am, I have access to all my documents, which is really great. That way, when that buyer does surprise me and calls and says, can we look today, um, I'm not scrambling to get to uh, my tablet or my um, folder. I don't have to carry those around with me. I've been caught off guard before and had just my phone with me and I can access uh, whatever I've saved in my Evernote right on my, t my phone, which is great. It's a wonderful app and um, for most circumstances it's free. I've used the free side and it gives me ample space per month to be able to transact real estate. There's also a paid side. It's the premium account. And I've used the premium account. I wanted to see the difference between the two. The premium account allows me to clip articles right out of the internet and also to save things right off of my email. Evernote also gives me on the premium side uh, my own email account so I can email directly into my Evernote program. What a great tool that is. I can CC myself or BCC myself when I send out a communication to my client and then pop it right into the specific file that I want it to go into. The premium service for Evernote is only $68 a year right now. And just so you know, as much as I like using Evernote, Evernote doesn't pay me any money to come in and talk about their services. Uh, I'm just a consumer uh, of, their, of their premium service, just like uh, other real estate agents. So the Evernote's real important for me in um, maintaining my documents and my records for my buyer. It also gives me the ability to, I'm working a little bit uh, backwards here, to store presentations. So here's a presentation that I created. Our company uses a, a program called um, uh, Toolkit, CMA, but it could be any type of PDF presentation that I want to use. So when I sit down with a buyer, I can uh, pull up that buyer consultation to keep me on track, just like with the regular listing presentation. I know the presentation is there for the seller or for the buyer because it's visual and they get to hold it in their hand, but the presentation is also there for me. It helps me 
stay organized and focused on the job that I have in hand. I also use uh, uh, off of that app screen, sometimes I put these right into my iBook account. iBook gives me the ability to flip instead of scroll and I kind of like that when I'm working with a, a, a buyer and we're looking at a presentation. Uh, some people like to use Keynote and Keynote's another presentation software the, or app. The, the uh, people who are using the, like an Asus or a Surface uh, where they have the, the full uh, Windows products in there, you know, the Microsoft products like PowerPoint, then you could use that as well and it works just fine. The benefit of using a, um, an app like Keynote, which does cost a little bit of money, uh, allows us to use our, our telephone, our iPhone, as a remote control. So I can stay in control of the, the presentation, give my iPad to the consumer, the buyer, or the seller, and move them through the presentation. It's pretty cool. The app for the phone costs a couple of dollars and the app for the, the iPad costs about eight, I think seven ninety-eight or something like that. Um, uh, looking at my phone, I can either look at uh, each slide as, the, as the, my, my customer sees it, or I can split my screen and have notes on one side of my screen and, the, and what they're seeing on the other side. It's kind of, you know, that way if I've got some data that I want to make sure that they, they um, hear, I've got it right there in front of me. I don't have to have any cheat sheets or anything like that or memorize that data. Or I can split the screen and have two of the slides in front of me. That way it allows for a real nice segue when I ask a question, then I can just move quickly into my next slide, um, unlike I'm doing now. Uh, the Evernote program gives me some other options too. A lot of times when I'm working with a buyer, um, I'll take my iPad with me so I can take notes right inside of Evernote as they uh, interact with the property. And, I, and you know, I can type with my one finger. You do that, don't you, when you're sitting there with your, your iPad and you type in nice and slowly like this because it's hard to really get a, a bunch of fingers on there when you're holding it. Um, I know some people have the... the um, keyboards, but those are hard to use while you're, while you're mobile and walking around. So Evernote gives us the ability to record conversations. It has a full menu bar, so I can change font and I can justify font. Um, I can spread it apart or put bullets in it or even the little uh, check boxes or tables. And I can attach PDF documents to it, but it also gives me the ability to record so when I click on the record button, instead of having to sit there and type real quickly uh, with the one finger method, I can uh, narrate. There goes the buyer into the kitchen. Okay, that's a little weird, but uh, at the end of the, uh, the walking through the house and we do that debrief, I might ask the buyer, would you mind if I recorded uh, our conversation? That way, here comes the benefit for them. I don't miss anything later on as I'm reflecting on um, what it is that you said about this property. Evernote also allows me to put photographs in. So maybe the buyer wants the, the fridge to convey. And instead of having to sit there and type in a serial number of a specific refrigerator, I can just either using my phone or my, my iPad take a picture of it and drop that photo right into this particular property's note on Evernote. And uh, that way I never really miss a beat. It just takes a couple seconds to do so. So it's a great program for me to, to be able to use, especially in real estate, but I can use it in many, many different ways. That's the, that's the main uh, program that I use in uh, staying organized with my buyers and my sellers. I've now moved over into the ZipForm program on my, my iPad. Uh, if you're using a Surface or one of the, the, the Microsoft-based or Google-based uh, tablets, then you can go right into Zip Forms Plus uh, on that uh, tablet. On an iPad, then it's an app-based program. And so the app is, is named a little bit different than the, the program that we're now using on our computers. On their computers, what are we on? Zip Form Plus now? ZipFormPlus.com, isn't that right? Well, in the iPad app, we're still using Zip Form 6. So when you go to your App Store, then you're going to look for ZipForm 6 versus uh, uh, ZipForm Plus. And 
uh, when you go in there and you you upload it or to to use when you when you get it into your your um, iPad, then uh, the first thing you see once you've logged in is a um, a little blue strip. So right down the middle of your iPad, there'll be a strip about this color, and you can't get any further in the program. Um, shaking your uh, iPad like an etch sketch won't help any. What you have to do is go into the, your uh, zip form account. Um, you've done that before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah. uh, so uh, when you're in zip forms, you'll notice if you're using the zip form six, which I know some people do, there's a little button that says get zip form mobile. And so once you've had it, you, you've put that on your iPad, then you got to come into zip form and click that mobile um, uh, little icon. In zip form plus, it's up here on the right, and it says the same thing. It says get mobile. Uh, uh, zip form for the uh, iPad to be able to work oh, costs about $10 a year, and it won't go past that little strip down the middle until you come in and you pay for it. So once you do, though, then you can use it just like you used your, your computer. Um, I know some of you have got keyboards, and you can use your, your iPad quite quickly because of your keyboards. I tend to use uh, my computer as much as possible because I can move around, navigate with it a little bit better than using my, my, um, my tablet. So in preparation for going out either on this listing appointment or on the, um, a buyer tour, then I've prepared a set of documents with the buyer's names in it. And of course, I can't put this particular property's legal description because maybe we're looking at three or four and the address, and so I'll have to wait on that and the, uh, the, the seller's information. But I can prepare everything else, and by putting all that documentation in my Evernote program, I've got it along with me anyway. And uh, I can then quickly come in here and uh, create or reach that transaction and uh, grab it. So here we are in Bob's transaction, for example. All the documents that I've previously loaded into a, a regular zip form transaction are in there, or if I apply a template, I can grab them that way too, and uh, uh, very quickly access them. So if I had to add a, a list or a, a, a sales price in there and then uh, you know deal with the third-party financing addendum and all those things, it's pretty easy to do. In this case, what I'm going to do is pretend that we're going through a walkthrough, and I want that buyer walkthrough and acceptance form uh, signed and acknowledged by the buyer, and I want them to sign it. And so I have the ability, if I click on my iPad, to sign that with a touch screen. So I can sign it with my finger, or I know some people use the stylus, right? The stylus, some of those stylus points are real nice. They're more like a pinpoint. Uh, I've got a big fat finger, and sometimes it doesn't quite work right. So I hit the sign with touch sign, and then I choose which document that I want to send over or have signed by the, the buyer. And I can choose any of them in my... Uh, transaction. Um, uh, when I click on it, you know, it changes from no to yes, and then I can hit next, and then I need to fill in the buyer's information, uh, and that's fine. If I have it already in my address book, because I've preloaded it from before, then I can very quickly access that information, and it'll auto-populate. I just choose that particular buyer, and in comes the information. I like, if I haven't filled it in before, to check that little box that says add to the address book. And then I have it in case we need other documents signed later on. I hit add. It goes in there. Here's the electronic agreement. You know, our signature is valid according to the uh, uniform Electronic Uniform Transaction Act because we say it is. And so whether we stamp or we sign with our finger or a stylus, because we say that that's our signature, it's a valid signature, then it is. And so when we get to this point, it's not okay to go ahead and click agree and move on. This is for the buyer to do because it's their signature that they're validating. So you hand over your iPad and say, here, this allows your signature to be valid. Uh, uh, read this, and if you agree, go ahead and hit I agree. And if not, then we'll have to get paper. So once they do that, uh-oh, everything went away. Don't worry, it's okay. Just hit touch sign right up here. And then, boom, over comes the, 
the, the little touch sign pad. Now, on my iPad, that's not really that big. I mean, this is bigger than my whole computer screen, but on my iPad, that little thing comes over about this big, and my fat finger's not going to fit in there. So all you have to do, though, is grab that corner and drag it over, and it, you can make it as big as your iPad screen. And sure enough, this is actually my signature, or Chris Client's signature, using uh, my finger. And surprisingly, it looks just about how I write. If I don't like it, I can clear it and then write it again. That's okay, I can do that. Uh, and once I come with something or Chris comes with something that he likes, then you just select it. And once you select it, then you can drag this wherever it's supposed to go in the document and put it in place and hit place. The first time I used it, nothing really happened. There wasn't any bing or any noise that acknowledged that it actually placed it. So I went place, 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 place. And before long, I had eight Chris Client signatures stacked on top of each other. You see the little um, red square with the white X? There were a whole bunch of them right there. And so when I moved this out of the way, I just got rid of all the extra ones. If you put something in a place that's not supposed to go, it's easy to delete. And then you can just go back and put it in there where it does go. So once I place that, then uh, I'm ready to move to the next part. Uh, doesn't this document have a place where the buyer uh, says that they had inspections and we fill in that little checkbox and then we put the inspection date in there and then there isn't another place in there where we, we check that they're uh, satisfied with the condition of the property and ready to accept it in its present condition. Isn't that what it says? Something like that. And so we have little checkboxes. Well, the uh, touch sign part of zip forms has that same ability. We've got a checkbox. We can also add text, dates, and initials to documents as well. So it does anything that you can do uh, using your computer. So in this case, I, I clicked on checkbox, and I dragged this checkbox up and resized it so it fits right in there where it says buyer has walked through and reviewed this property on and before the closing date. And then uh, I placed that in there. And then I can move it on up and says the property was inspected by an inspector or inspectors of the buyer's choice on uh, they reviewed that property report. And I can place that in there. And notice the little uh, boxes. I can, if I put it in the wrong place, then I can you know, click on that and it deletes it. I can go back and put it in there. When I'm happy with all the results, then uh, uh, all I have to do is click the done button. Pretty easy, huh? And so this is using the, the iPad as a, 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 a creating a document or creating a contract and then having the buyers, buyers or the, even the sellers sign it right there using the, the iPad. It's a really simple program to use. So what do we do with these things once we end up with a contract? Well, there are a lot of different types of uh, transaction management programs out there. Uh, one that I used for a while until our company um, supported one was a program that's now owned by DocuSign. Well, it's, it's really great. DocuSign uses these transaction rooms uh, where we can put all our documents. The cool thing about a transaction room, and SureClose has them, and BackAgent, I know there's a lot of agents now using those programs that are more broker-hosted uh, or broker-supported. Uh, the transaction room at first was for that one agent who was electronic but didn't necessarily work with a uh, a company or an office that supported that type of technology uh, and now they do as well there's a broker side to it but what this does is it allows the the agent to create a transaction room and put all the documents in there so whether it's the listing agreements and the disclosures whether it's the contract forms or uh, uh, inspection documents we can house all those documents in one place and here's the cool thing uh, inside that transaction room where we put all the documents, we can also invite people in there. So uh, in this one, for example, we got this little listing. Uh, we've got all of our documents in there uh, for the listing, the disclosure notices, the, uh, the listing agreement, the information about brokerage services, all the things that we need. And uh, what I want to do is invite the sellers in. And so, you know, if they want, we can put their pictures in here too. We don't have to do that. There's my picture. We don't have to do that either. I'm the listing agent. But I could also invite the buyer's agent in. 
and uh, we can invite the buyers in. Well, the problem with that for me is, um, what do I want them to see? Well, I certainly don't want the buyers to see the listing agreement, but I do want the buyers to see disclosure notices and contract forms and things like that. And, you know, sometimes in all the transaction of real estate, uh, maybe a buyer's agent who received a document already calls and says, hey, could you send me that again? Or maybe it's our seller, or maybe the buyer, they've misplaced one of the documents. It happens. Well, it seems they always call us when it's inconvenient for us to get that document to them. Isn't that right? Yeah, it happens quite a bit. So what we can do is direct them back into the transaction room, and whether it's the sure close or whether it's the the, the back agent program where we're using DocuSign's transaction room, it makes no difference. Um, uh, we can set who has access to what documents, and then those, those people can go and grab what it is that they need. And they don't even have to call us to do that. So the buyer who needs another copy of the contract, or the buyer's lender who needs a copy of the contract, uh, once they've been invited into the transaction room, they can go in there and get it. Uh, boy, when we start embracing these types of technologies in the real estate community, and buyers and sellers, not all buyers and sellers, but the ones who are more tech forward, embrace these technologies, what we're going to do is simplify the process of communicating electronically with each other. Uh, we no longer have to wait for someone to send over a document. We can just go and get it. And to me, that's, that's wonderful. So what have we done? We've worked now on a few of our programs. Our MLS in Houston has a wonderful app that I use. Some do, some don't. Um, so Realtor.com does. And Realtor.com is pretty cool as well because it gives me the ability to uh, send out to my buyer um, an invitation to use Realtor.com's app on their iPad or their phone. And when it does, it always frames me their agent. And then that way, if they request information about a particular property, it comes back to me. And that's very, very important. Nobody wants a buyer out there loose talking to listing agents. We want all that information to come back to us, don't we? Yeah, me too. So uh, that's a wonderful app to use if you're not using your local MLS apps. So um, I've used the DocuSign program, and it works great. Uh, the digital link that's in uh, side zip form now works very well as uh, as well. So whether you're a DocuSign enthusiast or you just prefer using the digital ink and zip forms, that's your choice and you can always set it up so that when you e-sign, whichever your preference is, that's the one you get to use. So uh, you don't have to do it the old-fashioned way and pull the documents over to DocuSign uh, anymore. You can go right from zip forms if you want to and hit e-sign and it takes you directly into your, your DocuSign program if that's what you choose to do. And there's a few others that I use. There's my iBooks program as well. And then my presentation uh, is, I use, typically use either iBooks for presentations or keynotes, but there's a lot of other ones that you can use as well, including like PowerPoint presentation for you uh, Microsoft package users. Uh, now let's talk about personal storage space. Uh, a lot of people are using Dropbox and putting documents in there. The space is limited. Um, uh, some agents are paying for additional space, but I hear from some agents that, that what they're doing is once they're done with that uh, Dropbox space and that sharing of documents that way, that they actually uh, um, delete the documents out of uh, their Dropbox account so that they can use that over again. I've been using Google Drive for a little while now, and I like it a lot. Uh, like Dropbox, it gives me the ability to to store files and I can share with other Google Drive users that way or email it out of there if I want to as PDFs. Um, but I also have, like Dropbox, the ability to nest files. So if I put all my buyer clients in uh, one folder and then inside those folders I can separate each of those buyers with their own folders as well or transaction uh, folders that way or I can do prospects and put different prospects in there too. So there's a lot of different ways to organize data in um, the, uh, these different management systems. And so what you have to do is figure out which one is best for you or which one you prefer because they're, they, they all reach uh, the different devices that we use, whether we're on our phones, 
or whether we're on our tablets or are using our, our laptop or desktop computers, it's accessible in all those locations. And that doesn't even begin to talk about the, uh, like the, the sky drives and the iCloud programs that come with our different um, 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 computers that we use as well. So the choice is really yours that way. But uh, if you haven't started using Evernote, I highly recommend that you start there and get very comfortable using that because of the ability to do presentations and also to, to store transactions um, uh, while you're working with the buyer and seller. And then from there, uh, I recommend uh, taking a look at using zip forms uh, to be able to use your tablet to sign documents as well. I want to thank you for the opportunity of meeting with you today. I hope that uh, uh, you have great success and becoming a more paperless agent. Thank you so much.